dear students of 10th standard and my dear friends today we'll start with the new lesson from first language english that is the gift of magi so before going to the lesson we'll try to know the background of the story so here the magi are the people or the wise men who gifted the gifts during the birth of jesus christ and this is connected or linked here or you can also call that the main characters in this lesson that is jim mandela are the metaphorical usages related to the magi so here the writer o henry yes beautifully pictureized the life of these people that is the husband and wife who had poor background but there was never a problem or a disturbance in their life even though they were poor because they loved each other so much so this is a story which gives us the message how these people were ready to sacrifice their best belongings when it came to giving a gift regarding or during the eve of christmas so they never thought about each other's belongings which were really very precious to each other but they only add in their mind that they have to give some gift during the time of christmas so that is the story here and one more thing what we see is when there is so much of intimacy or when you like each other or when you like your family members or your friends so this lesson gives you a message how you can maintain that relationship or continue with that relationship till the end of your life whatever problems you face or whatever is your situation so you should be always together and try to love each other help each other or dedicate our life so that we'll have a very happy life okay before going to the lesson will know in detail who are these magi and also about the poet the gift of the magi written by o henry so now here magi it is a plural form because there are uh, three people here and the singular form is the magus the magi were the wise men who brought gifts to the newborn jesus so when jesus was born that brought gift according to the bible the magi were three kings so that is a plural form that is caspar malachi and balthazar so these are the three kings who were very wise men and they had come to give gift on the birth of jesus christ and they had traveled to bethlehem from somewhere in the east probably persia persia see these people or the magi they were very famous because they were very wise and they were very open minded people so now i told you there in my introduction jim mandela they are the metaphorical usage related to these magi means the, those two are compared to magi these two are compared to these three kings thus the title of the story is taken as the gift of the magi means the gift that was given by magi is somewhat equal to the gift that is given by jim mandela to each other okay now about the poet uh, about the writer o henry o henry was the pen name of william sydney porter 
He was born on September 11, 1862 in Greenshobor, Greenshobor, North Carolina and he became famous for his short stories. Mainly his, his short stories were very famous and one more thing is he never linked his stories to that olden days or anything. So he used to take simple aspects or consequences and used to write little stories or short stories. He became famous for his short stories. He started the Rolling Stone a humorous weekly in 1887 and he was writing for Houston Post. What is this humorous? Humorous means which make people laugh or which really relaxes the mind of the people. He wrote a story each week for New York World. He has penned more than 600 stories. What is the meaning of the word pen? Pen is to write. The first collection of his stories appeared in 1904 in Cabbages and Kings, which was immediately popular. Other collections followed including the 4 million 1906, the Trimmed Lamp 1907. So, usually all, all his short stories, they were given a name and it had a particular name under which there were lots of stories or the collections of stories. So, here in this lesson also, you get a very interesting story and the language is easy but you have some usages wherein you have to understand by repeatedly reading that story okay now we'll start with the story follow my reading and also try to understand all the meanings that are given because they are all very important for you to understand the lesson okay here gift of the magi one dollar and 87 cents that was all and 60 cents of it was in pennies. Pennies saved one and two at a time by bulldozing the grocer and the vegetable man and the, but and the butcher until one's cheeks burned with the silent imputation of parsimony that such close dealing implied three times Della counted it one dollar and eighty seven cents and the next day would be Christmas. So the whole paragraph tells you about the financial situation of that family. So here one dollar and eighty seven cents that was all. So that much of money was there. You will come to know about all these things in the next paragraphs and sixty cents of it was in pennies. Pennies is in the form of bronze coins. Pennies saved one and two at a time by bulldozing the grocer and the vegetable man and the butcher until one's cheeks burned with the silent imputation of parsimony that such close dealing implied. So I have read it again because this line is very important. How was this money saved? So what, used, what did Della do? So she used to try to save money. That is by bulldozing. Bulldozing is arguing forcefully. So you can also take it as bargaining. The meaning can be also bargaining with whom? With the grocer, the vegetable man and the butcher. Grocer means where you get your provisions. Here vegetable means where you get buy vegetables. And the butcher, butcher is the shop where you buy meat. So here she used to always argue means bargain to reduce the price of whatever she used to buy there and thus she could save some money. And because of her argument what used to happen? So they also used to get sometimes disturbed or sometimes convinced. convinced. See that is what here burned with the silent imputation. Imputation is Suggestion. Suggestions means whatever she used to tell. You have to take only so much of money of Paris money. 
meanness in spending so she was very what is that mean in spending the money because this is how we see people from poor background or from the middle class family how they can save the money okay the close dealing here means stingy bargaining so she used to try to give some suggestions argue bargain and save the money and this dealing you can call it as stingy dealing means where you really think so much to spend the money stingy so this is very important here three times della counted it so whatever money she had she was counting it going on counting 1 dollar and 87 cents and the next day would be christmas so you get a link here why is she counting the money because next day is christmas there was clearly nothing to do but flop down on the shabby little couch and howl so della did it which instigates the moral reflection that life is made up of sobs sniffles and smiles with sniffles predominating see very important here so here you know that she had less money so what is the suggestion here or whatever it is telling is because she had less money so she was feeling very sad and that's why there was no other way just to flop down flop down is to fall down and where is it on the shabby little couch shabby means which is worn out which is old so on that couch she fell down because of lots of sorrow and there she started weeping or crying see here little couch and howl so when you cry you will have you make some sound that is called as the sound of pain that is called as howl so della did it which instigates the moral reflection that life is made up of so usually when you have such problems in the family we go through all this so thus her situation is reflecting or it is showing you the situation of della there so what happens in that situation sob sob is to weep sniffle sniffle means because of that situation you will have a deep breathing and also sometimes when you come out of that situation you start smiling so in this situation usually what happens the sniffles predominating means usually the dominating factor there or before that situation the main situ uh, main experience what you will get is that is sniffle sniffles sniffing repeatedly while crying so this is a situation of della and she is really in a bad mood while the mistress of the home is gradually subsiding from the first stage to the second take a look at the home a furnished flat at dollar 8 per week it did not exactly beggar description but it certainly had that word on the lookout for the mendicancy squad so here now who is the mistress of the home there yes it is della so she is the mistress now gradually she is in a very silent mood that is subsiding means she was already weeping she was sniffling sniffing and she was feeling very sad now from that mood she is coming out or she is very silent and she started taking a look of her house so how is the house so it is a furnished flat at dollar 8 per week dollar 8 means it is a very low rented house or a flat usually people from the poor background or the middle class can spend for such flats so here she the explanation you can just see he did not exactly beggar description but it certainly had that word on the lookout for the mendicancy square so beggar description is impossible to describe in words 
means the situation of the house. It's not so easy to explain in words. And what is this mendicancy squared means? The beggars. Almost the life of the people here that is Della and Jim. It is to a very low level and that is what is picturized here. That is their flat and she has so much of urge to buy something and there is a shortage of money. All this gives us a picture that the situation of their house is very poor. In the vestibule below was a letter box into which no letter would go and an electric button from which no mortal finger could cox ring. Also appertaining thereunto was a card bearing the name Mr. James Dillingham End. So here now the meaning of the word vestibule is entrance. So that is the entrance of the house. There was a letter box and into which usually the letter is put. Now here she is telling there is also uh, here the writer is explaining there is also an electric button that is the bell which no mortal finger could cox a ring. See here mortal the you have to take the noun form or the noun meaning it is in the noun form noun form means it is human being noun form is human being so mortal its meaning as a noun it is human being so there was no human being or no human finger which could cox a ring. Cox a ring means succeed in making it ring. Means no one came and rang that bell. Also, appertaining thereunto. So, connected or fixed to it was a card bearing. So, there was also one card near that bell which was fixed and it had the name that is Mr. James Dillingham Eng. Means the owner of the house or husband of Della. The Dillingham had been flung to the breeze during a former period of prosperity when its possessor was being paid $1.30 per week. So, former life of the Dillingham is also given here. So, at that time they had a bit of very good life when that was being paid means they had a prosper life when it was being paid that is $30 per week but now there is a problem we will come to know what is that problem they are facing. Now when the income was shrunk to $20 though they were thinking seriously of contracting to a modest and unassuming D but whenever Mr. James Dillingham Eng came home and reached his flat above, he was called Jim and greatly hugged by Mrs. James Dillingham Eng, already introduced to you as Della, which is all very good. So now here come you come to know that before when he was paid $1.30, they had also a prosperous life, but now his income has shrunk. What is the meaning of the word shrunk? It is reduced. So it is reduced to almost $1.20. Though they were thinking seriously of contracting to a modest and unassuming deal. But whenever, so here they used to always think that how they can somehow change a modest. Modest is decent. Modest is decent. Thinking seriously of contracting to a modest and unassuming deal means having something a decent way of leading the life. So they used to think about that. But whenever Mr. James Dillingham Heng came home and reached his flat above, he was called Jim and greatly hugged by Mrs. James. So here, even though the salary has shrunk and they have a problem in leading life, in a way they were leading before but they used to think that somehow they can manage with the decent life but even though the intimacy between both of them or the love towards each other that never got disturbed because whenever James came home so how did Della welcome him? She used to call him as Jim. 
with too much of love she used to call him as jim and always hugged him because there was no difference in their life even though there was a difference in the income of james so this is the good quality you see in della and also when it comes to jim della finished her cry and attended now here you got the life of uh, jim and della in the previous all paragraphs you have come to know the life in starting two paragraphs you saw how della used to think about the next day celebration that is christmas then we got the picture of their life what is their life how they used to manage the life or how there was a difference in their life when the income of jim got reduced now again the previous situation is coming here that is della finished her cry and attended to her cheeks with the powder rag so now she finished crying weeping so she is trying to make her, herself comfortable so what did she do she powdered her, she attended her cheeks with the powder rag a piece of cloth for applying face powder so a piece of cloth or you might have uh, you are also using that is the puff that is used to apply powder so that is what powder rag and she makes herself comfortable she stood by the window and looked out duly at a grey cat walking a grey fence in a grey backyard so here you can also see uh, the picturization so she is sad somehow she made herself comfortable now she is standing by the window and she is looking out there she could see a grey cat walking on a grey fence in a grey background so all this grey appearance it tells us about the dull mood of della or how she is disturbed so she is observing it so all these pictures also depict her situation there tomorrow would be christmas day and she had only dollar 1.87 with which to buy jim a present she had been saving every penny she could for months with this result 20 dollars a week doesn't go far expenses had been greater than she had calculated they always are only dollar 1.87 to buy a present for jim her jim many a uh, happy hour she had spent planning for something nice for jim or for him something fine and rare and sterling something just a little bit near to being worthy of the honor of being owned by jim so here this is what is her feeling towards jim this is what she is feeling or she was planning to do for jim on the eve of christmas now why is she worried it is the christmas festival tomorrow and what is her main problem is she has got only dollar 1.87 and with that she had to buy a gift to jim now this savings she went on doing for month with this result even though she collected money since one month this was a result with the 20 dollars a week doesn't go far so he used to get very less income so here it cannot be easily maintained so she has to she has to maintain the household things the expenses other than that and somehow she had to save money from that so it is not so easy expenses had been greater than she had calculated so she had calculated something she had her own calculations how she could save money but what happened the expenses had crossed it only 1 dollar 1.87 to buy a present for jim her jim so she had only so much money where she could plan a gift to whom that is her beloved jim that is her husband 
Many a happy hour she had spent planning for something nice for Jim. Many times she used to sit and happily think that she could bring something a very beautiful or a very attractive gift for Jim. Something fine and rare and sterling. Something just a little bit near to being worthy of the honor of being owned by Jim. Yes, very beautifully explained here. She wanted to bring something fine, rare. Rare means most of them should not means it is not so easily available one rare and sterling sterling is excellent very good something just a little bit near to being worthy of the honor of being owned by him yes so she wanted to bring something little bit which can come near to the worthy of honor of being his wife or for being owned by Jim means and he should also be valued for that because he has got that gift. So one way she loves him a lot, she wanted to give him something worthy, something rare, something sterling and the other way she felt that if he owns that it should be also a honor to him. See that love towards her husband, the situation and how much of intimacy that never changed when it came to the money or wealth or anything. The love was always the eternal one. She never bothered about other things but she always wanted to be very happy with her husband. There was a pier glass between the windows of the room. Perhaps you have seen a pier glass in a dollar eight flat. A very thin and very agile person may by observing this reflection in a rapid sequence of longi longitudinal strips obtain a fairly accurate conception of his looks. Della being slender had mastered the art. So here the pier glass is a tall narrow mirror designed to hang on the wall especially this type of glass you see in the flats which is of very low low rent so such glass was there and a very thin and very agile person agile is active person may by observing his reflection so when you stand in front of the mirror you know this experience so can Reflection in a rapid sequence of longitudinal strips. Longitudinal means relating to length. So you such people will get the proper that is fairly accurate conception idea. So about their reflection they get the proper or fairly accurate conception of his looks how you look. So you get that idea. Della being slender had mastered the art. So Della, she was very slender, a very good looking lady. So she was mastered in this art of looking herself or enjoying her looks in front of this mirror. Suddenly she reeled from the window and stood before the glass. Her eyes were shining brilliantly. But her face had lost its color within 20 seconds. So she was standing near the window and observing something outside. Suddenly she brilled, brilled this turn and she stood, in, stood before that glass and her eyes were shining. But suddenly the face had lost the color. Color means she was feeling sad or she was pale within 20 seconds, within a short period of time. Rapidly, she pulled down her hair and let it fall to its full length. Now, what did she do? Suddenly, she opened or pulled down her hair so that it completely got opened up and it was of, you could see the full length of her hair. Now, there were two positions of the James Dillingham Engs in which they both took a mighty pride. Very important part of the lesson here. 
one was jim's gold watch that had been his father's and his grandfather's the other was dela's hair dela's hair so they are two important positions had the queen of sheba lived in the flat across the air shaft dela would have let her hair hang out of the window some day to dry just to depreciate her majesty's jewels and gifts so here you come to know very important part of the lesson here they had two important positions one is james watch that was the gold watch and it was very important to them means they both took a mighty pride means they were very proud of their positions so he had a gold watch it was given to him from his father and also it was his grandfather's means his grandfather had passed it out to or given it to his father and his father has given him so it was the very important gift or important thing in his life what was the other one that is dela's hair so dela had very beautiful hair so these two position it was very important in their life now the writer here compares their positions how does he compare he tells that had the queen of sheba queen of sheba is the queen who visited solomon and gave him many rich gifts so queen of sheba she was well known for her positions that is the wealth and also her beauty so if she would have lived there in that flat across the air shaft means a space for ventilating a room means if she would have lived very close to dela's house or her flat dela would have let her air hang out of the window some day to dry so some day means the writer is creating a situation the queen of sheba is in the very close the neighboring building and one day if dela would her would have let her hair for drying after the head bath so this would depreciate means the beautiful hair would depreciate her majesty's jewels and gifts means this hair or the beautiful hair would reduce depreciate is reduce the value of devalue the beauty of this air would have reduced or the reduced or devalue the what is that value of jewels and gifts that sheba used to possess or she used to give so she was very well known for her beauty and also the wealth she had so the beauty of the air of dela would or devalue the value of the jewels and the gifts she used to give who used to give the queen of queen sheba so this is queen of sheba so this is how the writer is comparing means the hair of dela is more precious than what queen of sheba possessed see now one more comparison had king solomon been the janitor with all his treasures piled up in the basement jim would have pulled out his watch every time he passed just to see him pluck at his beard from envy so one more is the comparison between the treasure what king solomon had and the watch jim had so king solomon here you can see king of israel in the old testament he was regarded the wisest of men his court was known for its pomp and splendor so he had lots of wealth or treasure so if he would have lived there had been the janitor janitor is the caretaker if he would have been the caretaker there near their flat and he had piled up if he would have piled up all his treasures there where he used to be the caretaker in the basement and every time jim would pull out his watch whenever jim passed from there whenever he went from there every time when jim used to pull out his watch 
means take out his watch to see it just to see him pluck at his beard from envy means every time when jim took out his watch king solomon would feel jealous of that because it is very beautiful than the treasure what he has so what used to do he may pluck means just go on scratching or pulling his beard from jealousy you might have seen different types of gesture what we do sometimes when we get when we get very irritated we just scratch our head or sometimes you here especially when it comes to the male male means the man they may just go on pulling their beard or scratch it when they are disturbed in the same way the comparison is given here by the writer by seeing his watch king solomon may be very jealous of it and he may start what is that plucking his beard from envy envy is to feel jealous so now dela's beautiful hair fell about a rippling and shining like a cascade of brown waters it reached below her knee and made itself almost a garment for her and then she did it up again nervously and quickly once she faltered for a minute and stood still while a tear of two splashed on the worn red carpet now she is front of the mirror she open her hair and how did it get open the air fell about her rippling rippling means the wavy movement rippling of the air and it was very shining and it looked like a cascade cascade is the waterfall such a that is lengthy or long hair so it fell like a cascade of brown waters very shiny golden hair it reached her knee so it was to such a length it was almost to her knee and made itself almost a garment for her so it covered her whole body so it looked as if it was a garment means a jewelry or a very beautiful clothing and then she did it up again again she just lifted it nervously and quickly because something is going on in her mind she is planning now once she flat faltered for a minute and stood so once she got disturbed then she stood still while a tear so she had tears so two means two drop of tears splashed and fell on the carpet so she is very disturbed on went her old brown jacket on went her old brown hat with the frill of skirts and with the brilliant sparkle still in her eyes she fluttered out of the door and down the stairs to the street so here now she is getting ready on went her old brown jacket means she wore the jacket then what did she wore then she wore her hat now with the frill of her skirt means a sudden movement means she just turned with the brilliant sparkle still in her eyes so still there is a brilliant means that liveliness in her eyes and she fluttered out fluttered means moved moved out means she came out and she came down the stairs and to the street or she went out of her house where she stopped the sign red so she came near a board means there was something there sign red means the sign board on which something is printed madam saffrony hair goods of all kinds one flight up della ran and collected herself panting madam large too white chilly hardly looked the saffrony so there what was there on that sign board madam saffrony hair goods of all kinds so there is the board on which it had written madam saffrony this is a name so hair goods you get there is different types of hair goods available means the goods made out of hair now by seeing this she what happened she went up flight up means going very fast fly flight up 
Della ran and collected herself panting. Panting is to, to long with breathless. Means she ran so fast that she could not breathe. And there she saw the lady that is Madame Lash too white. She hardly looked the saffrony. Means she was there. So she wanted to tell something. Before that she will observe her. So she was a lady there or the owner of that shop. Will you buy my hair? Asked Della. So she called her Madam. And then she was just observing her. Then Madam Safrani, will you buy my hair? So what is the plan here? She is thinking of selling her hair. So she is asking, will you buy my hair? So you have the picture here. I buy hair, said Madam. Take your hat. Here it is. Y-E-R. It means your. So it is a usage, archaic usage. Hat off and let's have a sight at the looks of it. So she tells her, yes, you take off your hat so that I will look at your hair. Or how does it look? Down rippled the brown casket. So again that hair, it came down with lots of beautiful waves. It came down like a brown casket. Twenty dollars, said madam, lifting the mass with the practice hand. So what did she do? She lifted that hair. It's a mass means very thick and very long hair. She lifted it like this and she said, yes, I'm ready to give twenty dollars. Give it to me quick, said the la. So she was so much eager to buy a gift. She told, yes, give it to me. That means she was ready to cut her hair and to sell it. Oh, and the next two hours tripped by on rosy wings. Forget the hashed metaphor. She was ransacking the stores for Jim's present. So now, within that two hours after she had her hair sold, she tripped by on rosy wings. Means she was just going on everywhere searching for the gift. Forget the hashed metaphor. Hash is mixed. So she just went on searching. She was ransacking. Ransacking means searching the stores for Jim's presence. So so much involved there. So she was just running about and she never bothered about anything. Forget, forget the hash that is the mixed feeling what she was uh, what is that? She was feeling there and she went on searching for the gift. She found it at last. It surely had been made for Jim and no one else. So at last she got a gift there. She felt that it is surely made for Jim and not anyone else. There was no other like it in any of the stores and she had turned all of them inside out. It was a platinum fob chain, simple and chaste in design, properly proclaiming its value by substance alone and not by meretricious ornamentation. As all good things should do, it was even worthy of the watch. As soon as she saw it, she knew that it must be Jim's. It was like him, quietness and value, the description applied to both. Twenty-one dollars they took from her for it and she hurried home with the eighty-seven cents. Okay, finally now there was no other like it in any of the stores because she had got something and she was very happy about that and such thing was not available anywhere. She had turned all of them inside out. Means she had gone to almost all the stores there and searched for that. That is the meaning. She had turned off them inside out. It was a platinum fob chain. Simple and chaste in design. So she had got a platinum fob chain. Fob is 
a chain by which a pocket watch is attached to a waistcoat. So, I think you might have observed in movies or in uh, any of the uh, functions especially which are shown in TV or you might have also experienced. So, you have a chain with the help of which you attach that pocket watch to the that is the waistcoat what you wear. So, with the help of that the, with the chain that pocket watch will be attached. So, that is called the fob chain and that was very simple and chaste. Chaste is plain without much decoration. It did not have too much of decoration but it used to look very good. She was very attracted towards that and she is also very happy that it was properly proclaiming its value by substance alone and not by meretricious ornamentation. So, how was the watch? It was very beautiful and it was proclaiming its value by substance alone. Means how it is to look, how it is made out. That itself was telling its value but it was not by the meretricious that is superficially attractive but of no real value. Meritricious ornamentation means you get some items which will be decorated too much but it is not to such a range that it is very valuable. But this uh, watch, uh, this chain was very good and it used to look very beautiful. As all good things should do means all the good things it should be beautiful according to its value of substance not because of too much of decorations. It was even worthy of the watch. So, it was also too much worthy or it was also worthy to that watch. It was almost equal to that watch. As soon as she saw it, she knew that it must be Jim's. So, when she saw that, she felt that yes, this has to be owned by Jim. It was like him, quietness and value. See, there also she just goes on thinking or she is trying to compare the personality of Jim with the gift. That is, it was also like Jim. That is, quietness and value. So, it had so much of value even though it looked very quiet. The description applied to both. So, whatever descriptions it is here, given here, quietness and value, it was related to both. 21 dollars they took from her for it. So, what was the cost of that fob chain? 21 dollars. So, she had 1.87 cents. She got 20 dollars for her. What is that for her air? Now, 21 dollars is paid for that fob chain. Now, she will go home with the leftover money that is 87 cents. With that chain on his watch, Jim might be properly anxious about the time in any company. Grand as the watch was, he sometimes looked at it on the sly on account of the old leather strap that he used in place of a chain. So now she felt that with that chain on his watch means having that chain on that watch, Jim might be properly anxious. So, Jim may always feel like seeing the time in any company means being anywhere. Grand as the watch was he sometimes looked at it on the sly. On the sly is secretly means before used to means when he had that watch what he is wearing now without that chain used to look at it on the sly. Sly means secretly used to watch it because that watch had old leather strap that he used in place of a chain. It did not have chain. Instead of that, he had old leather strap. So, he used to secretly watch it or see it. So, now she feels that once this chain is put to that watch, he will be very happy or anxiously he will look at that watch. When Della reached home, her uh, intoxication gave way a little to prudence and reason. 
she got out her curling irons and lighted the gas and went to work repairing the ravages made by the generosity added to love which is always a tremendous task dear friends a mammoth task now she reached home and now she feels that there is some change in her that is intoxication gave way a little to prudence prudence is having good judgment means here now she had taken a very good decision because of giving a gift to her husband that is to cut her hair now she wanted to come out of that situation where she has already sold her hair now what does she do she got out her curling irons curling irons here an instrument used to curl hair so instrument used to used to curl the hair so it, there is an instrument which will help you out to curl your hair so she took out that and she lighted the gas and went to work went to work repairing the ravages so she started curling the hair ravages made by generosity what is that ravages ruin wreck means she cut off her hair so she wanted to make it proper and that ravages was made by generosity added to love so why did she cut her hair means she was so generous she was so happy in doing that because it is for her husband that she has done it which is always a tremendous task dear friends mammoth task yes sometimes in this situation when we in such situations the decisions what we take that will be a very tremendous task and also a mammoth one mammoth is very huge extremely large you will be in a very confused situation you want to do something and you think so much and later on you take a decision and thus you get a result wherein you feel happy but still you will have some what is that thinking or a feeling of sadness in you because you have taken that decision but again you feel happy that you have taken this decision to give happiness to the person whom you love love a lot okay now here we'll stop this session that is the first part of this lesson the next part of the lesson or the next story part of the story will be described or discussed in the next video thank you